Yeah. Well, all right, guys. Uh, I'm Arik. I'm an engineer at Spiral. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the math that goes into Frost, and I'm going to try to give everybody a really solid intuition of uh, how exactly Frost works under the hood, at least in terms of the key aggregation portion. I don't actually know how the nonce portion works, so if you want to know about that, you can ask Jervis or Jesse or Lisa. They have been actually implementing Frost. I have just been messing around with the math, um, which is, I guess, not as fun. But uh, before I begin, I was wondering whether anybody here is uh, familiar with how Shamir secret sharing works under the hood. All right. So I guess I think if most of you are. Well, well, whatever. Even, even so, we're, we're going to cover that anyway because it's, uh, it's for the benefit of uh, the star of the end people and it's getting recorded. So, first of all, I can check whether this actually works. Yeah, the pen works. So, I want to start by talking about secrets. And uh, specifically, the thing that is interesting about Shamir secret sharing is the, the notion of uh, being able to reconstitute a secret from different parts. So, a type of secret that I think really lends itself quite well, for example, is let, let's say that I have a secret and my secret is actually a formula, right? My secret is uh, a polynomial of the form uh, mx plus b. So if we were to graph such a polynomial, what would it look like? Oh, it's a line, yeah. So let's just say it's something like this. Uh, where the slope is m and uh, the offset here is, uh, is b. And uh, if I wanted this secret that is simply a line, if I wanted to split it up amongst multiple parties, right, what I could do is I could give somebody like points, I, I, I could give each friend a, a different point on this particular line. And uh, so the question is, Hey, Casey. Hi. Hi. Come on in. There's a seat over here if you want to hang out. Sorry. Cool. Um. Cool. Yeah, so, so the question is, how many points do I need in order to uniquely identify this line? Two. Two points, yeah. As uh, that's how linear equations work. And, uh, Let's say our expression where our polynomial were a little more complicated. Let's say it's uh, x squared plus bx plus c. So what what does it look like when graphed? A parabola, yes. And hey, Jose, come on in. if we have different points on this parabola, how many points do I need in order to be able to uniquely identify it? Three. I need three points. Yeah, so I think it is quite intuitive to everybody in this room that if I have a polynomial of degree n, that I need n plus one points, uh, uh, that this polynomial is valued, that in order to be able to uniquely reconstruct this uh, specific polynomial. So without further ado, let's actually try to do that. Let's delve into the math of how would we be able to concretely reconstruct a specific polynomial. And for the sake of simplicity, we're going to just keep working with uh, quadratic equations and parabolas because I, I think that it keeps the math pretty easy and uh, you know pretty overviewable. So let's say that uh, we have uh, three points. And we want to be able to reconstruct the parabola that those points comprise. Uh, first of all, before I start, let's say that the x values here are just 1, 2, and 3, and that the people who own these points, so the polynomial evaluation at point 1 belongs to Alice, this belongs to Bob, and this belongs to Charlie. Now you've got to introduce the cast of characters such that we are able to talk succinctly about people involved. And uh, I would like some recommendations from the audience as to what the y values of these particular points shall be. So does anybody have a suggestion for 
Alice, Bob, or Charlie. But just please keep it below 10 because we don't want to work with large numbers. We don't like large numbers. Eight. Eight for Alice. All right. Uh, what else? 12 for Bob. I mean, right. maybe, maybe 20. You only have like one. Oh, well, below 10. Okay, 10. Okay. 10. Oh, so it was <laughs> nine, 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 nine. It doesn't like. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, we need scale. 10 because it's nine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Four. Yeah, it takes us a while. Four. What's the four for a It doesn't matter. It doesn't, but the, the graphics don't, don't have four. to be accurate, right? It's it's four is higher than eight. Yeah, nobody cares. It's a new number system. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, blame my four drawings. <laughs> so we have a secret polynomial. Let's say that we have a secret polynomial, S of X, S for secret. And we know that uh, the secret polynomial evaluated at one is uh, eight, evaluated at two is 10, and evaluated at three is four. And, uh, we want to be able to reconstruct this particular phenomenon. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Lagrange interpolation. So the way to do that is uh, let's, let's actually try to reconstruct our polynomial based off individual parts. So let us first have, um, so we will do, we will do three different polynomials. Each fractional polynomial is going to be for each one of the participants, one for Alice, one for Bob, and one for Charlie. And then we're just gonna add them up. And the result is gonna be uh, the polynomial you're originally looking for. Uh, so let's first start with Alice's polynomial. Uh, what we want is we are looking for a polynomial that is gonna go, that is gonna be zero at two, and it's gonna be zero at three, because we wanna be able to not affect Bob's and Charlie's values. We just want a polynomial that is going to be non-zero at uh, Alice's x index, which is one. So what is the most trivial mechanism for accomplishing such a polynomial that is going to be uh, zero to two and zero to three? x minus two times x minus three. Yeah, precisely. So we're going to have, we're, we're going to have a polynomial that looks like this. And this is the naive polynomial. However, there is one issue with this specific polynomial, and that is that it may or may not go through y equals eight at x equals one. Oh. So we need to scale it. So how can we trivially scale Alice's uh, polynomial such that we can remove this asterisk? The asterisk is there because it doesn't go through Alice's point yet. Plug in one. Or, <coughs> plug in one to figure it out. Plug in one for x. Yeah. All right. So let's say we evaluate Alice asterisk at one, which is uh, minus two times uh, minus one, which is two. So what what do we what do we need to do? Multiply by four. We multiply it by four. Is there? There's I mean, I could say. There's more general. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could say that a of x is just four times a asterisk of x, but. Is there a way that we could kind of, instead of just saying it's four, is, is there a way we could make it a little bit more elegant? Yeah. Uh, let's see. You Add could, six. You, sorry? Add six. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I, I'm just going to solve it because uh, I don't you, know. You, 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 you put one, one minus three and one minus two below, and you have eight, uh, eight the number, uh, and, and eight divided by that. X one minus uh, it's sort of X one minus three X one minus two or below. Yeah. Okay. And the Y value. Yeah. yeah. But if we wanted to generalize it a little bit more, we can just say that we want this polynomial evaluated at Alice's coordinate uh, because that is the the Y value that we're yeah. seeking, yeah. multiplied by this uh, original polynomial that we had over this particular polynomial evaluated at Alice's coordinate. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and then, and, and, and that is going to be Alice's polynomial. So, oh, hey guys. Come on in. There's a couple seats over here if you want to split tasks. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Yeah.
So let's just expand that particular formula to all of them. So we have that Alice's polynomial of x is just f of f of uh, one because that is Alice uh, times the Al Alice's polynomial of x over Alice's pol polynomial at per particular particular x index, and then we can do the same thing for Bob. Mm -hmm. So for Bob, it says, um, yeah, let's let's do it for Bob. What what is the formula going to be for Bob? I have a question. That's f of one or f yeah, of, it's f of one. F of one. Okay, so it's probably going to also be f of one. Not quite, because Bob's x I index is yeah. yeah, it's f of two. Oh, f of his index. Yeah, because okay. we want to scale it. Right? We gotcha. want to scale it rate to, to go through Bob's what, point now. We need f and not s. Oh, you're right. Okay, yeah, it's it is. <laughs> what is. Nice catch. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, it's no worries. Yeah, so it's the. Um, co uh, oh, should it be B star X over B star 1? Not star quite. 2. Two. Two. 2. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Let's just say let, let, let's start introducing more variables because I think this this has too many numbers. Let's just say that Alice is one, Bob is two, and Charlie is three. And uh, so let's uh, let's evaluate Bob's because I think you get the gist. We don't need to write it out for for Charlie either. So we can say that Bob's polynomial is actually the secret polynomial evaluated at Bob's location, and we we know what Bob's uh, Bob's value is multiplied with um, Bob's secret polynomial, I mean Bob's asterisk polynomial, which is let's uh, let's expand it. What is Bob's and what is Bob's star of x? So it is a polynomial that is zero at the other two indices. So it would be x minus one, x minus three. Or substituting x minus three. Oh, cool. Right. Okay. And over Two. Q minus A, two minus C? So Q C. minus A, B minus C. Yeah. So B minus A. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. And B minus C. Um, so now we actually have a polynomial that, that scales for for Bob. So and uh, if we were to add all of them up, right? If we were to add up A of X plus B of X plus c of x, we would end up with uh, s of x. And uh, there is actually uh, the, there is a theorem that proves it, that proves that this yields the lowest degree polynomial that goes through all three points. But uh, I'm not going to touch on that because we have a lot of other information to cover. There's two seats over here, sorry, Eric. Yeah, of course, two please. Two here. seats here, one over there. One over here. Sorry. No worries. No. That's okay. <coughs> okay, now you're working on the Okay, guys, welcome. Who's comfortable with having someone on their lap? Pretty much. Space back here to hang out. Thanks. But you're not saying I'm a lot, it's just there's a denser reason why you can use these Does somebody want this chair? I think we're okay. Sorry, Eric. Right. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll get <laughs> Just the three places? Can you I don't know how many people are excited to learn about polynomial evaluation? Yeah, interpolation. <laughs> <laughs> So, so far, this is all straightforward, right? Mm -hmm. We have yes. just been able to create a bunch of separate polynomials. Yeah. And it helps that this is my second time to do this today because I haven't done right. the talk earlier. Yeah. But it's good. It's really good review. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that are really helpful is, so the reason that we are sending, for, exa for example, Alice's partial polynomial through zero at Bob and Charlie's indices is such that we, when we scale it mm -hmm. to go through Alice's y index, we don't alter the y coordinates 
for Bob and Charlie because they're, they're still going to be zero. And so that's why when we add them up, we are going to produce a polynomial that does go through all three points because they just don't interfere with one another. And that also does give us this mechanism of trivially coming up with this naive polynomial that goes through um, zero, one, that has roots at their particular indices. Cool. So now we have a mechanism that Quite trivially, actually, if we because we already know everybody knows what they need to scale their own value with, and tr quite trivially reassembles the original secret polynomial. Okay. But I think, from a you know computational simplicity perspective, you know our secret may not need to be the entire polynomial. Our secret could also be that particular polynomial evaluated at a specific point, like you know a hundred thousand or five thousand. Or, 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 or zero, right? Mm -hmm. So the way that Shamir secret sharing works is that the secret actually is the specific polynomial evaluated at zero. Oh, wow. Yeah, so and, and it has a couple benefits, and we're going to wa uh, work through them. Let, let's, let's touch on one of these benefits first. So if we have, uh, if we're trying to construct a, if, if we have some sort of unknown polynomial, Right, f of x, that is ax squared plus bx plus c. And our secret is f of 0. Then what is the secret equivalent to if we... C. Yeah. It's just c. Um. So if we're trying to come up with a Shamir scheme that requires at least three participants to come together to reproduce the secret, we can make the constant our, our Shamir secret, and then we just generate random coefficients for the higher degrees of x, and uh, and that's it. That, that's all that we need to do. We then just have to evaluate it at the indices of our other participants, and, uh, and then we distribute that. So that is one of the benefits of evaluating at zero. Let's uh, now assume that we want to be able to figure out what uh, b of x is at 0. So if we were to substitute 0 for, for x there, right, then what would we end up with? The, the value at, at, the, at the point times a minus x, or, I'm sorry, a, b, a, c. Oh, wait. Or a, c over a, c. No, it's 1. It's just 1. Here, let me yeah, let, let me Let's do some substitutions. Oh, yeah, AC, so over, AC over B minus A, B minus C. Oh, this is cool. Okay. Well, I think you're forgetting the first factor here, right? That, I, I mentioned that initially. Oh, yeah, sorry. S, B, times. Mm -hmm. yeah. AC over B minus uh, A, B minus C, but you uh, have a minus sign there. Or no, 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 no minus sign. It's AC over B minus A, B minus C. Right? No. No? Because x is zero, so it would be negative a. Well, I guess negative yeah, a times negative c is ac. Yeah, yeah they, they would cancel each other out. Uh, let's uh, let's pretend that we also had a fourth participant, Dylan. <laughs> okay. All right, where this <laughs> formula would be. So there, all of a sudden, it is negative again. Yeah. So let's try not getting rid of the of the signs quite yet, because there is a simpler trick still. <laughs> so yeah, what what was the value of the Yeah. Negative, negative a, a times negative, negative b. Negative and then negative b. Negative a times negative. No zero. No, it's all the same. Over negative minus negative c. No, it's still the same. Okay. But there's no sorry, x over substituting. Sorry, there's no, sorry. There's no b in there. Yeah, it's still b minus a. Since, since times a, b minus c. Since there's a one to one with the factors in the numerator and denominator, you just can reverse the denominator. Yeah, exactly. That that becomes much easier, right? So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> that, that that is similar. S yeah. Of b. Exactly. S of b here. At the front, the, first, front, yeah. the, the, the coefficient at the front. Oh yeah, times times um, yeah. yeah. Oh. That's the secret. Times times the, the y value that, that you already know. Mm -hmm. And this is actually the Lagrange coefficient. 
And one thing that is interesting about this, as you will notice, is that it doesn't care about the y value. The Lagrange coefficient just cares about what your y, uh, what your x index is, and what the other participants' x indices are. <laughs> so you are able to very trivially reconstruct any secret just using this this formula. It's so weird too. It just seems weird. Yeah, and so when you when you substitute it, if you have like s of x equals a of x plus b of x plus c of x, you can also you also know that s of zero, which is the actual secret, is just a of zero plus b of zero plus c of zero. So you don't really need to care about anything else. And uh, just each participant, when trying to reconstruct the Shamir secret, all they need to do is they need to calculate their Lagrange coefficient and multiply it with their secret value. Because the secret value, that their secret chart, is simply that secret polynomial evaluated at their particular location. So that is all that there is to it. This, this is really the magic factor for Bob. We have a corresponding magic factor for Alice. We have a corresponding magic factor for Charlie. You know, Alice multiplies her y value, or her shard, with her factor. Uh, Bob multiplies his shard with his factor. Charlie uh, multiplies his shard with his factor. Those are all just different Lagrange uh, coefficients based on you know, the participant and the other participant's indices. Mm -hmm. They add them up. The, sheet, the secret is reconstructed. And if you wanted to, say, make a 3 of 5, right, you simply evaluate your parabola at, uh, at another two indices. So that way you can involve Dylan and Emily also. And as long as when they come together, they know what their own index is, and they know what the other two participants' indices are, it's going to work. And because Lagrange interpolation always yields the lowest degree polynomial, if they were to come together with a uh, uh, with an unnecessary, a redundant fourth participant, it still would work and it still would correctly reconstitute mm -hmm. the, the secret, which is simply this polynomial evaluated at zero. Is this related to error correction curves? Uh, so I, I, watched watched a, I watched a video on number file today where they drew that same curve and they talked about <laughs> if you add more x's on it, you can error correct if you're missing some of the previous data. I have yeah, heard that Shamir yeah. is a form of error correction. Yeah, I guess, I guess so. I don't think it's like to do with, say, BCH codes or Reed Solomon, but. Uh, it looks a lot like the Reed Solomon equations. <laughs> really? <laughs> to me, it does. <laughs> uh, sorry, it's been, it's been like a year since I was looking at Reed Solomon, so I just don't recall. But okay, cool. yeah, that, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. Just a very complicated Galois field. Because um, you can tolerate a certain number of missing shares. Right. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, well, this does do that, and this is actually, yeah, this, this is really simple and super straightforward. Although I will note, keep in mind, that for Shamir secret sharing and for Frost, this is actually all happening over a finite field and not over the real numbers. That's, uh, you know, all the math is still the same, except when you, when you divide, it's actually with a modular multiplicative inverse, that's all. That's, that's the only interpretation. What, what, what uh, number is used for that, for modular? The oh, set key. Yeah, is it, is it the same as the same? Same, okay. Yeah. Same as yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, well, it, it, it depends on your application. Like, you can reuse any. Yeah, field. but generally for Bitcoin purposes, of it's the, the same. Field. Yeah, for, for fraud. I don't for really think that. I think it's of the field. Okay, it's of the field. Yeah. Because it's the scalar values. Okay, so it's that not, it, It's not points. Right, it's right, scalar. right. So that, that number that's used for the, uh, fine, for the yeah. scalar is. Uh, is the same as uh, yeah. Same at least for, for for Frost for yeah. Shamir secret sharing, oh, yeah. I don't know if there are any standards oh, yeah. with the standard implementations. Yeah. It depends what curve we're using. Yeah. Well, they don't need a curve for Shamir. Secret. They just need a finite field. Shamir secret sharing and this doesn't matter. Oh wait, so could you use a different field for this than the tech B? Right, you could because it doesn't. For just Shamir secret, really yeah, matter. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Does this have to have that uh, Fermat little theorem thing? You know, right. Yeah. Not only. Really. Big enough. So, uh, you can yeah. even use complex numbers. So you can figure out square root easily. Right, because it doesn't really matter. You can map it back to the point later. Like all you need is a coefficient to map it to private keys and Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah. You just cannot use integers because you can just brute force. Yeah. I think. Is it numerated? Yeah. Yeah. I might be jumping ahead, but I'm I'm wondering how you calculate the public key. A public key. Yeah. 
Paula. A public key in this. Uh, just think your this is your public key. key. Yeah, think this time. Yeah. Yeah. Generator point. We're just in Shimmer's secret sharing. Yeah, I came in late, so I didn't know if I missed. Yeah, it. we we, we haven't gotten to the actual frost portion yet. I was I was just about <laughs> to, to to get started on it. <laughs> so let's uh yeah let, let, let's draw a slightly larger coordinate system. And uh, let's, <laughs> yeah, so let's uh, say we have five participants mm -hmm. Alice, Bob, Charlie, Dylan, and Emily. And they all choose their polynomials such that it is uh, three of five, which means that their polynomials are all of degree six. No. Which is, what, I'm sorry, I missed the question. No. Four. What, 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 what degree polynomials are they if it's a 3 out of 5? Oh, 3? Oh, it's 4 degree. 2. Two. two. Oh, yeah. Two. It's, it's, oh, it's 2, yeah. Two. For what, three, 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 points, three, three points to find the problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What, what, is, what is the degree of the polynomial for 3 out of 10? 2? Two? Two. Yeah. Two. 3 out of 100. Two. 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 We got that then. Yeah. 5 out of 10? Four. 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 Ha. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say that they all arrange their polynomials in such a way that they can be drawn really neatly, like this set of stacked parabolas, where the they get increasingly steeper. All right. Let's pretend that. Those parabolas are kind of kind of decent. So let's say that this parabola is uh, Alice's, this is Bob's, Charlie's, Dylan's, and Emily's. And we're trying to set up a frost secret sharing scenario. So they all also have X indices. where Alice's x index is 1, Bob's is 2, Charles is 3, and so forth, with Emily's being 5. So, what is the mechanism whereby we could distribute shares in such a way that uh, an aggregation might work? Yeah, you know, maybe it is somewhat premature a question to ask, but, you know, I'll answer it shortly, but I just want people to kind of ponder it for... Exhibition or, right? Well, yeah, it, it is Schnorr, but uh, the, the thing is, people are trying to distribute. So everybody has their own share of the aggregate public key, and the, as well as the aggregate secret key that never actually gets reconstructed. And they want to share shares of their individual sub secrets with uh, the different other participants. Can they create shards of, of their own? Yeah, they create shards of, of their own. Okay. So how, how do you calculate a shard if you, if you have a secret? Like let's say Alice's secret key is actually just a of zero. Bob's secret key is b of zero because it's all like Shamir, right? It's all you know. Our secret keys are simply our part, uh, you know, polynomials evaluated at uh, at zero. So how how do you calculate what a shard is? Going back to what we what we were just discussing. Would it be one less than the number of shards you need for all participants plus, I guess, what you need? I'm going to start there. Just well, a shard for each participant for, plus yourself. Yeah, you, you need a shard for each participant. And let's just assume that you also send yourself a shard too, for simplicity's sake, because that is optimization that we can modify later on. But from mm -hmm. a math perspective, it doesn't really matter. That is uh, an alpha one error. But whatever. <laughs> uh, so how, how can... Bob, for example, generate shards for all of the other participants, for Alice, for Charlie, for Delta, for Emily, and let's say also for himself. What, what, what is, the, what is the, the mechanism for calculating what, uh, what Emily's shard of Bob's secret is? Uh, I guess yeah. if you all start with your pub keys or some known value, then you can just go from there and just compute it off of like your own pub keys. Before doing this, then, well, you you know what your own pub key is, but you you still you still need to also share shards of your secret key. Right. Um, you share okay. just A B C D E, right. and then for the people you're sharing the the value that you have at at, at, at zero, at the at A, at A B, you know wherever you are. Let's see, 
that value, um, you can then share that as a second step with limited number of people. Right, but like, how do I? Here, let's let, let's let's go back to the <laughs> Shamir secret <laughs> sharing. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, let's go back to the Shamir secret sharing thing, where we have some sort of polynomial, right? Mm -hmm. Our our polynomial is um, uh, s of x. That is that is our secret, and specifically, our secret is actually s of s, s of it all at zero, and we have. Uh, Three participants: Alice, Bob, and Emily. Uh, Alice, Bob, and Charlie. Well, actually, it's the same. How do I calculate what the shard is that Charlie should receive if I am the knower of that secret? If, if I know what my polynomial is, how, how do I uh, figure out what what value I should send to Charlie? Just evaluate the 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 yeah, exactly. I just evaluate uh, Charlie, which I, is Charlie. Okay, sorry. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So applying this knowledge to this particular uh, thing. How can Bob calculate what shard he should send to Emily? Yeah, exactly. So Emily gets she gets B of E, which is B of 5. She also gets Alice's, Charlie's, and, and Dylan's polynomials evaluated at her location, right? So really what everybody is getting Alice's set of known information is this, like these five points, and of course all of them have that for herself. Bob's is these. I may have draw, drawn it a little bit too densely, I, <laughs> I, I apologize. So let's skip Charlie and Dylan and let's just go with Emily next. And so Emily gets all of these points evaluated. I have a quick question. Yeah. How do you um, come to consensus on the order? That everybody's in. Well, that's, that's, yeah, that, that, that's, that's beside the point. You just need to come to a consensus. You could say, order people <coughs> based on based on their names. Just, you, you just have to have, you, you, you need to know the index, and the index needs to be deterministic. And the index doesn't need to be monotonically increasing counters, like one, two, three. So, for yeah. example, your index could be someone's public key serialized as 33 bytes. Okay. Um, 32 bytes of snoring. That's why I mentioned yeah, it, it originally, it's like some common factor you all understand about each other. So like if there's any consensus that needs to be come to on the ordering or anything, you can just use that. You need, you need identifiers that everyone has come to consensus about. Okay. That makes sense. Whether public keys or integers or whatever. Correct. And so what happens is if we look at the perspective, if we look at Dylan's perspective, right? We, we have a bunch of these shards. We have secret shards evaluated at, uh, his, uh, at, at his index, which for simplicity's sake, we're gonna keep at four. So we know Alice at four, we know Bob at four, we know Charlie at four, obviously we know Dylan at four, and we know Emily at four. So if, if Dylan, Charlie, and Emily wanted to come together and create a signature, right? then what, what would need to happen is that somehow you need to be able to reconstruct a share in such a way that it would map to the secret. That, and that it would map to the, to the secret that is the aggregate of all of the polynomials evaluated at, uh, evaluated at, uh, at x equals zero. Yes. So um, just a quick uh, question. So if, for example, Dylan has all of the, um, oh, he has all of the other points. Oh, sorry. He has, yeah. So he has all of the other people's uh, people's shares evaluated for his specific index. So oh, so he has a secret for that point. He has like he has like S four. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. The sum up is is S four, right? Exactly. Yeah, so that actually, that, that, that makes it a little simpler. So, that, that was yeah. if we know that, so if we know that our secret is actually the sum of all of these sub-polynomials, then we know that our secret key is simply S evaluated at zero, which is Alice's secret value at zero plus Bob's secret value at zero plus, uh, and so forth, plus Emily's uh, 
uh, polynomial also evaluated at zero. And it also means that our, our public key is simply s multiplied with the generator point, which is the same as uh, Alice's uh, secret multiplied with the generator point, and so forth, plus uh, Emily's secret multiplied with the generator point. So everybody could simply share their fractional public keys, and if we were to add them up, mm -hmm. we'd have the resulting public key. So really, because Dylan has all of these comprising factors, due to the homomorphic behavior of polymorph uh, of uh, of uh, polynomials, what Dylan can do is instead of going through each one of these separately, he can just say, "Yeah, I know that adding all of those up is the same as simply the secret polynomial at four." And so, if Charlie, Dylan, and Emily wanted to come together and they wanted to uh, let's ignore producing a signature for now. Let's say they wanted to recon reconstruct the secret, the actual secret, which is of the sum of these polynomials evaluated at zero. All that they would need to do is, is what? They, they, they sum up and they, they, they have like a, a unique uh, polynomial and then they, they, they can do like, they, they can find a root, which is the intercept and that is the secret, right? Well, it's, it can be a little simpler, right? Well, like, if, if three of them can sum it up and, and at different points, you have the three points and you can verify with the public, public key for the zero point. From yeah. reconstructing a problem from the three other points. Right. So we do have the points, right? We have uh, we have Charlie's, Dylan's, and Emily's and points. You sum them to the... Yeah, well, what yeah. happens? We, I guess we could... So what happens if we just we, sum yeah. them up? Like, this is Charlie's plus Dylan's plus Emily's. What, what does still, that we still, give Yeah, we still don't have A and B. Yeah, this, this, this doesn't... Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to... Fight. Yeah, okay, never mind. However, what we can do is, if we recall the coefficients <laughs> we were talking about earlier, if we don't sum them up like this, but we sum them up, multiply it with the Lagrange coefficients, where for Alice, uh, I mean, sorry, for 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 uh, Charlie, it was the other two that are involved, right? So it was Dylan and Emily yeah. over um, um, what 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 was it? Uh, four minus three and five minus three, or or was it the other way around? Three minus four and uh, three yeah. minus five. I don't actually recall. But the point is, like, we 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 have this Lagrange coefficient, so we will just. Call it that this, uh, we will call this particular thing our oh, Lagrange coefficient. Yeah, you, or, can, you can reduce the value, you basically take the value of zero and you you, 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 you have a fraction of it because um, you can figure out that fraction from using Lagrangian with the value zero. Yeah, so we, we take those Lagrange coefficients, here the Lagrange coefficient would be for, uh, let's say, now three, can, and then the other indices would be four and five. That way you can verify. The, yeah, and we can add this all up. So we we have we multiply it with uh, Charlie's Lagrange coefficient, which is so this three and four uh, five. We multiply Dylan's secret with Dylan's Lagrange coefficient, where the other indices are three and five, and we add. Emily's secret, and multiply it with Emily's Lagrange coefficient, where the other indices are three and four, and that way we do end up reproducing the secret at index zero. However, yes. When you say you reproduce the secret, um, does that mean all Charlie, Dylan, and Emily now, if, if they do this computation together, each of them now knows the private key to the public key? Yes, and we don't actually want to be doing that. Yeah, so that's we, sad. Yeah, that, that, that is sad. We don't actually, I mean, they, they can't do that. And in Frost, there isn't really a way around them being able to do that. In fact, they also could collude in such a way that they could find out anybody else's private key. <laughs> they could find out Bob's or Alice's because they do have those charts. This is Frostfoot. <laughs> you know, maybe a little bit. If, if for whatever reason, you didn't trust the... You did have a trusted way to deal the secrets, but you had a trusted way to reconstruct them, then that would be perfectly fine. 
That doesn't sound perfectly fine. That sounds like I'm letting other people know my private key. Well, that's like that's what Coinbase does every single time they need to like pull some coins from uh, cold storage is they reconstruct their Shamir secrets to get the private key and that becomes a hot key and no longer pull key. So there's certain operational key management processes where that is like a fine practice. But in other contexts or settings, it wouldn't be good. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's jump over a little bit to the Schnorr signature formula. And the Schnorr signature is, uh, you know, is we have S and R, right? So it's, it's actually a tuple of, of two things. We have a, a big integer and we have an elliptic curve point. And um, S specifically is uh, is what? R it's plus. the secret key multiplied by the challenge. Yeah, can I can I use X for the secret key here? Yeah. Because it's going to be a little, a little easier. I think it's copyrighted now. <laughs> the patent expires in a few years, so you're good. All right. The challenge being a hash of the public key, the nonce commit of the message. Yeah. And then I also, well, what else? Oh, plus uh, the, the, the nonce. The yeah. Nonce. Plus the secret nonce, yeah. And R, of course, is the secret nonce times the generator point. So, what Alice and Bob can do. You, you will notice that if we have an aggregate key, we can just add, if, if we have a pop key, which is actually P1 plus P2, and, you know, please, uh, you know, ignore rogue key attacks for the time being, <laughs> what we could do is we could make S equal S1 plus S2, where S1 equals X1 times hash of the message, um, P1 plus P2 and R uh, plus uh, plus R prime or, or, or whatever, right? Like we want to split up the nonce too. It, it, it doesn't really matter because the nonce is at the point. The nonces are too complicated. We don't want to talk about nonces. <laughs> <laughs> but because the uh, aggregation of Schnorr signatures is so beautifully linear, we can do the same thing here. So instead of adding our our secret multiplied with a Lagrange coefficient that solely depends on our index and the indices of the participants that we are trying to sign with, we instead multiply a signature, multiply our Schnorr signature, that is where the private key is our own individual secret, so the, the, the private key is, um, is our shard, uh, so you know, let, let's call x uh, X Charlie V S three uh, times you know the hash of uh, the aggregate public key, uh, you know the message the aggregate public key which we're just going to call P which is you know all of these things evaluated at zero added up multiplied with the generate point and uh, some nonce that we're going to pretend is properly added up and just magically uh, gives <laughs> everybody their individual fraction and so. Uh, we multiply this thing also with the respective Lagrange coefficient for you know for the for Charlie's index. Now when we had before we had the secret knots. And we do the same for the others too. So Dylan's um, Dylan's secret, um, Dylan's signature is uh, simply Dylan's secret multiplied with the same hash of, uh, you know, whatever, multiplied with Dylan's Lagrange coefficient, added with Dylan's secret nonce, and Emily does the same thing. And when we add those up, because of those Lagrange coefficients, what we're actually going to end up having is, uh, we, we, we can regroup it because we can extract the hash. So we have the hash of uh, this stuff multiplied with these secrets added up correctly with the Lagrange coefficients. And that, of course, is the same as our actual aggregate secret. So that we were, we were able to add up the partial signatures without, without showing what the signature is, without showing what the, what the private key is. And because those are all offset 
by this uh, individual nonce, the different participants are still not able to extract it by simply taking the final result mm. and, uh, and dividing it. <coughs> okay, wait, so sorry, just to like recap, if that's cool. So you like make partial signatures and then combine signatures? Yeah, okay. you just add them up. Right. You, when you take your partial signature, you just don't just multiply with your private key, but you also multiply with your Lagrange coefficient. Cool. And that is okay. all. That is all you can know. So, yeah. And, and, and that makes this thing trivial because if you wanna if if you wanna create a frost ceremony with somebody else, mm. you just generate your own random secret, you generate random coefficients based on the threshold amount, and then you evaluate your polynomial at uh, all the indices of all of the participants, and you send each one of those participants the their respective shard. Then the participant adds up all of the shards that they received and that is equivalent to the aggregate polynomial evaluated at that participant's index. So then, with that aggregate polynomial being also simply the shard or the private key, the, the, the fractional private key, all they need to do when they want to create an aggregate signature is they sign with the private key, but they multiply it with their Lagrange coefficient, which only depends on their index and the indices of the other people that are trying to create a signature with. So all of that's all they have to do? That is all they have to wow, do. Wow, it is trivial. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously there's this whole nonce complication that I want to address. But there's a simplicity in there somewhere. <laughs> well, no, it, I, mean, I see the simplicity. Uh, I, think I, I, think I, kinda, I think one thing I kind of lost you on that would be nice is like when you're doing the signing procedure, like earlier you were talking about how you kind of had to have everyone's secrets and like add them together and you reconstructed the secret in one place. Does this let you prevent having to reconstruct the secret on place because you're creating signatures and well, stuff? Well, as long as, as, as long as you only uh, reveal, or as long as you only use the Lagrange coefficient as part of the signature and not yeah. to try to do something maliciously, sure. Okay. Uh, so, but, you know, if, if there is a threshold of malicious participants, which, again, they need the threshold, so mm -hmm. that, that's the entire thing that we're trying to prevent. If their threshold was insufficient, you'd have a threshold of malicious participants, then they can do whatever they want. Right. They can reconstruct the original secret, they can reconstruct each of the other participants' secrets too. Mm -hmm. And uh, Because when the when the partial signatures are shared, they contain the the share of the secret multiplied by the challenge plus the nonce. So you can't extract the Shamir share out of the partial signature. Right. But then algebraically what happens is like all the nonce is just sum. Yeah. But then you have this other term which is like the challenge hash times the Lagrange. Times, times the the, the Shamir share. Yeah. And when those terms all add up, you factor out the constant term, which is the challenge hash. Mm -hmm. So you have yeah. the challenge hash times the sum of each share times its Lagrange coefficient. Mm -hmm. So that sum does the reconstruction, oh. but you can't isolate it out of the partial signature. It like all gets compacted in when you sum it together. Mm -hmm. Unless you know the aggregate secret nonce, in which case you could subtract it and then do a module with like an inverse of the challenge hash, and then you would have the aggregate secret. Totally. But nobody knows what the secret aggregate secret nonce is. Well, is that, that depends on proper nonce handling, and that is. <laughs> 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 yeah. And okay. it would render the whole thing in. So, is there a why not? Why not uh, find a way to have this Lagrange coefficient? I, I know it's it's tied to the secret, but is there any way to like move this to the nonce side of the equation you so can. that you're not revealing your secret? You don't reveal the secret. But they can reconstruct it. <laughs> Only if Only you if know you the, the, the aggregate secret nonce. Aggregate. Yeah. Which no one could know. I see. Okay, so the, the, the nonce is protecting you. Mm -hmm. that, yes. That's like most cases with like secrets, the nonce is kind of the thing protecting you. Yeah, yeah. because All even in a Schnorr signature, things. if you didn't yes. have the nonce, you could extract the private key. Yeah. You just divide by C. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. another question. <laughs> um, so. In music, um, in order to tweak, you essentially have to tweak by, uh, you have to add the challenge to a tweak so that it's, it's on the same order. How would you tweak 
Or how would you add a tweak to make it tap script or tap root compatible in this situation? You have to add the tweak at the very end. Because if you add the tweak beforehand, you are breaking the efficacy of the Lagrange coefficients. Because the Lagrange coefficients are what guarantees that when you add them all up as, as factors, that they're producing the value of the polynomial evaluated at x equals zero. Okay, so the 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 group pub key for this whole thing that you all commit to, um, the the secret behind that is not just all of your s's, but it's the s and the Lagrange coefficient, correct? Well, the the beautiful the the beauty of those Lagrange coefficients is that. If you take these polynomial y coordinates and you add them up with a respective coefficient that knows what the x index is and what the x indices of the others are, that it automatically adds up to the value of the polynomial simply evaluated at, at x equals zero. So using the Lagrange coefficients allows you to only to, to reconstruct the value of the polynomial by simply from having a set of uh, a set of points that you know a priori. You I, cannot really, you know, so the Lagrange coefficients are instrumental here, but then the end result is the same as if you simply took the polynomial and plugged in x equals zero. That, that is the entire purpose of the Lagrange coefficients. So is your partial signature is it better to look at it as it's your secret and your Lagrange coefficient multiplied by the challenge? Or is it, are those three separate? Well, the Lagrange coefficient changes depending on who your co-participants are. So the Lagrange coefficient is not really part of your secret. Your, your secret is just the shard, right? And you dynamically compute the Lagrange coefficient because depending on whom you're trying to create an aggregate signature with, the the values that you need to plug in there change. I guess my confusion is in music, you don't, when you add a tweak to the partial signature, you don't just add it to the partial signature, you have to add it with the challenge. So you actually have to introduce the it's challenge. It's the exact same thing in Rust. But what about the Lagrange coefficient? Do I have to add so that? So if, if you take the music equation and you replace the music coefficient with the Lagrange coefficient. The key coefficient or the non or the, the key, key co the key coefficient? Oh. You have frost. Frost oh, okay. is exactly the same as music, except you swap the music coefficient for the Lagrange coefficient for signing. For key gen is totally different. Right. <laughs> and for tweaking it's the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now can you add it to your library? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So what's your library? Oh, I, I have a music library. Oh, cool. Nice. And uh, so I, I want to move to Frost because you can't do like threshold signatures with music. So. But I guess apparently you can because this is so close to music already. Yeah, so but it's, to, uh, it's all about Lagrange. Yeah. Okay. You didn't know I'm glad I came. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Quick question about nonces. Is it the same thing as music where well, you cannot deterministically derive the nonces? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse and Travis are way more qualified to answer non's questions. I think we should just centralize non's provider that gives us all of our <laughs> nonces. And yeah, I can do that. Trust me. <laughs> we have really trusted <laughs> random non's gen, like, yeah. like an oracle of some sort. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Trust that identity provider. Dan Bonet would love that. We'll call him Delphi <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. Uh, do you know the reason for that? For what? Is it for for what you can't for use deterministic same, uh, nonsense? No, that would be great. Can we talk about that? Yeah, can we talk about that? <laughs> 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 I've been using deterministic nonsense. <gasps> Is it the no. last one? It's only okay depending on who you are. The last, uh, last one to choose could cheat and uh, just uh, take the sum of the others and, make it, and basically make it disappear, make the nonce disappear? Well, that's the row key attack. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's solved through the, like, this, uh, the nonce commitment scheme where everybody, like, commits and, and multiplies uh, this like coefficient yes. but the the attack is if let's say you have Alice, Bob and Charlie and they're, everyone's like okay we're using deterministic nonces and they give their nonce commitments and so there are they have their aggregate uh, R in the challenge hash mm -hmm. and they, they run the round and then let's say Charlie submits 
uh, different knots than what Charlie committed to. So then the signature fails. Then they rerun it. Um, and now um, what's going to happen is they'll produce a signature with uh, malicious knots. Well, then they'll then Alice will have the same knots. Bob will have the same knots, but Charlie will have changed his knots. Oh, and with two invalid signatures, you can uh, na- so it'd be, subtract it'd, them, and you can get information. It's like not it's like knots reuse. Okay. Uh, similar, except what's being reused now is the challenge value is staying the same, oh. the private key is staying the same, but the R value has changed mm-hmm. between the two different signatures. Yeah. So and then you can compute the private key. So this is something okay. you never use an twice ever, right? Or no. Well, this well typically to never, uh, you can avoid using and uh, reusing an ounce by making it deterministic, but in this case. Because the protocol could be replayed, and if people are doing something deterministic when they replay it, they're going to use the same value. Right, so you either like can't replay, or you have to use on certain constants, right? Exactly. Yeah. But if any, if there's any possibility of replay, no determinant. Right. No, the way that I. So to be really clear, they are okay as long as you don't replay ever. I mean, and really, if basically if there's a multi-party protocol, you should not use deterministic nonsense. Like okay. it should only be for like, like a single like party. Oh, so, like a single so sure. party shared. Like yeah. lightning single by taproot channels. Yeah, like if you ready to do that? I mean, it could be multi-party on the higher level. Like you know, you have channel counterparties, but in terms of who has the private key and producing a signature, that should just be like a single party protocol mm, for okay. deterministic nonsense. Okay, so you're saying that the lightning taproot should not use a terminix not nonsense. It doesn't work in it. Well, this is for multi for, 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 music, for the music part. Yeah. music part, yeah. Uh, I thought the current proposal said that they were doing that. Or... No, no, no. They're, they're the, the, last, the last guy can uh, do it deterministically. So then in, in music, there's one, one oh, other party yeah. can do it. Uh, so that's the part where we do it deterministically, but the other oh. one is non deterministic. Oh, there's just two people, so you can do that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I got to think about that more, but yeah. Interesting. I have some trivia. <laughs> if you, you here, here we are in Atlanta. If you go down 85, you can go see Lagrange. Oh. Really? There's a town. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 the next time. Next time. No, I've been for now. Yeah. 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 The is I think there's one in Iowa too. Is it the same Lagrange or a different Lagrange? What? Sam LaGrange. What? Is the rose named after the guy? Oh, uh, the, the town? The guy was I, I don't know, I imagine, but let's check. So, <laughs> do, we, we have Wikipedia. His life from life is in three stories on all. Let's see. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Why am I still confused about the Germanic signals we're using? In order for nons to be secure, yeah, we can work the math later. It's actually named after the country estate in order to of the life of the Marquis de la cool. Lafayette. Was there any? Is that all the things? Yeah, that's that's all the things. It's not it's not that complicated. So it's all the things. Nice job. Yeah. Oh, done! Wow! Cool. Many questions. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. 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 Well, I'll explain pure rotation at the basis of Shamir secret sharing because they're just with frost it's just extrapolate from Shamir secret sharing, right? If you have a polynomial, burn me right away. Let's let's make it slightly higher. Let's make it a little more interesting, right? And this is this is your secret of zero. This is your s of x, and you have a polynomial evaluated at s one. You have it evaluated at s two. Evaluated. Three, four. So you have all of those different so bounds, right? 
not sign it. Let's make it a two of four. And then for each actual message that we're going to sign through the music. Oh, I don't think it'll work. Essentially, oh, okay. I think this is already at least a, <laughs> you know, a third degree, a uh, third degree polynomial, right? So it's, it, it has to at the very least be a four out of something. Let's make it a four out of six. All right. Let's make it four out of six. There we go. And you have if if you want to replace one of the keys, right, or or multiple of the keys, all really that you have to do is uh, you just evaluate this particular polynomial at, at the new value, and you say, hey, you know, this 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 is what you're gonna get instead. Your your index is gonna be seven, and you're going to get uh, each SF, SF7 because you already have this problem to begin with. If you are uh, if you're if you know the actual secret polynomial. So so it's always going to be the same person. You can't like you know substitute in. Well, if, if a quorum of four people come together, right? They can calculate as zero, albeit they cannot. Well, they could actually recalculate the entire polynomial themselves, but they could also just generate a different polynomial that is uh, f of x is uh, a. You know some other a, some other b, some other c, and then plus the original yeah, polynomial that's zero because the secret is supposed to stay the same. And then they need to completely recalculate all the different charts of the distribute to people, but um, the result is still going to work. Which they, that was I mean, so they can do anything. Because because they would, they, would, they, 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 they can work for everyone, they can bring like, uh, like a new one, a new polynomial. Yeah. They can yeah, interpolate so to a new number, like when you wouldn't like, use. But you're there. talking about so you pretty much new become god of the polynomial. Um, okay, so the polynomial stays the same. Each, all the changes so is well. In this case, the polynomial then, stays the same. If, then, if you were to calculate, if, if you already know the polynomial and you just want to uh, generate a new share. So you should, generate so a new share is bringing in a bit X basically. Yeah, but yeah. you could also replace the polynomial and just keep the secret the same because if the secret is just the polynomial at, then, at X. So if you did that, the other share oh, would now be invalid. Yeah. Actually, no. They would also they would still work mathematically, right? You cannot, <laughs> you, you cannot remove their knowledge of it. Uh, of the secret, or yeah. the, the secret. Right. And the thing is, if you don't want to do anything on chain, and your public key is simply S of zero times G, then that, that means that those shares will still work and will still be able to produce a valid signature on. So there's no way to revoke shares in your There's no way of revoking them, no. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. But you because, because the exit zero, you can just ignore the other guys. You they they say we're not going to do them anymore. And then uh, trust process. everyone to do that. that. Fix so them. adding new shares yeah. kind of okay. increases. Now you have two adding, signatures. Adding new shares yeah. without changing yeah. the polynomial yeah. is like adding the same C. more. And, and, and right. keeping the same threshold. C, right, yeah. okay. Yeah. And so, but if you, you recalculate a different those curve, then you would be able to keep the shares. But right. the, the other the shares same. still work mathematically. The other shares still work, but out of zero. the new ones that are issued, you aren't increasing yeah. the n. Right. Yeah. However, you now have you know, a 4 out of 6, and also yeah, separately yeah. a 4 out of... Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Because they need to be like so defining going into the new group signing. Yeah. So the way I think like your group selection. So like now and in the new group of the new curve would be able to collaborate with any of the any of the previous ones. Yeah, yeah. they have yeah. 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 And the new curve could, could be like a two or three years, two or three years. Right. Yeah. Because you're just approximate the same yeah. insert section. Cool. Wow. Woo. You just literally just need S of zero. Yeah. Can you write down the password? I have no idea what it is. I'm trying. Oh, oh, but if you want to tell me, I was trying to find it, but I know, I know. I need it. Well, you tried to do it. One day to prepare. He was trying to do it. Two sentences. No way. So that's why it's all going to be a fail. Where did you learn all this stuff? 
I look it up. Use the same. <laughs> we learned it from the internet. Um, Where else? Uh, yeah. There's, 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 a a there's, there's, there's a bit. There's a bunch of There isn't a bit for. Is there a bit for Frost yet? Yeah, there's a paper. Is there just one paper that's like the paper to read? Yeah, but there are also explainers. I think so Jesse has written an explainer, right? No, he's working yeah. on the. And you, you have created so an explainer. You have created the. There's a diagram. I found the diagram. The, uh, the LARP, the Frost <laughs> LARP is what you did. In progress. Yeah. 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 What's it called? Yeah, so it's. Uh, I was. I was somewhat inspired by Nifty. But, yeah, I mean, it's because uh, I started looking up non like you know how the all non to use Blackstone problems and started getting on in my team. head. So I was like, you know what would be great if we had props to And so yeah, I just never quite got it to the finish line. I would maybe do something there. Because we have some such a bold thing around, especially with the next thing like that. Because the process is two round signing. It's a two round. Protocol when you yeah, sign, yeah, and yeah, make it a single yeah, vision right. all you need to pre generate yeah, on yeah. 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 And then you start to get to the question yeah. like, how do you right. manage these nonsense so, 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 so you don't yeah. accidentally yeah. mix them for uh, uh, like uh, signing uh, rounds. Uh, okay. So yeah. I think Void <laughs> had some interesting optimizations around those things. I can't name it off the top of my head, but there's a. For which things? Lloyd's um, by some interesting um, nonce management strategies that he mentioned oh. on you know, his. So there is a talk in the Sydney Bit Devs. You can find it on the transcripts where um, Jesse was talking to Lloyd about Frost, and they mentioned the thing or two about nonce management. Um, so yeah, I can't really name all the stuff off the top of my head. It's just. Nonsense, you can, I mean, there's different. There's things you can do where, like, you know, whenever you produce a signature, you also pass a nonce commitment yeah. that you'd use for the next signature or something like that. Okay. You know, like little, little yeah, that, things like that's that. That's why I thought props would be nice yeah. to be able to. Yeah. Yeah, like in Lightning. Yeah. Yeah. It's a. Um, it's a doozy. Yeah. Um, but also, it's like. I mean, unless you're using air gaps, adding an additional communication around is probably not that big of a deal. Um, unless you're using air gaps? Right, so you said unless you're using air gaps? Yeah. Because, like. Oh, that's a yeah. real pain for for hardware signers. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, like signers were okay. always, always pain. I'm like, because I'm such a lightning person, I'm like, keys are online, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Most cases. Yeah. Okay. But it still could be like, let's say you have a ledger, you plug it in, and it like, if everyone's, uh, if everyone's already submitted their aggregate nonces to some server, it could just pull, like, or pull down the nonce commitments and send its nonce commitment, and then produce its signature. Like, it all can happen really fast depending on the setup. So. And if you do pre-generate nonces, you have to be really careful. Mm -hmm. So I think it's oftentimes better to just not do the pre-generation. Yeah, but then you have, I think I was talking to you earlier, um, if you pre-generate pre and you have like geographically distributed keys, then that would be a bit of a pain, right? Yeah, but it's probably a pain anyway, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so. Yeah. I feel like we used to have like really simple nonces and they were just literally a luxury without knowing who they were. <laughs> and what's the state of these uh, ZK ways of doing deterministic nonces? Like, do you think the end is there something similar for Frost? Is there is this active research? Is this something we're gonna get before ten years? <laughs> and I think you you could use music DN for Frost. But the the cost, the performance cost. And is it the size of the proof or just generating it that is custom? I'm not that. sure. Probably both, but okay, yeah. But it's... you probably don't have any implementation that is production ready for any of these CKPs. I don't know if there's a use of DM implementation. Um, what does that mean? What is a, what is a ZKP deterministic knots production entail? It's well, so then you can use deterministic nonsense safely because every participant attaches a zero knowledge proof that they generated their nonce using a protocol. Oh, wow. So you don't have this participant who's like not doing it correctly. Um, oh, it's, so it's like 
okay, trustless way of yeah committing your nonsense. Like you wouldn't you wouldn't exchange partial signatures until everyone's like. Let's see. You'd have to. You'd have to somehow verify before the signatures are exchanged. But yeah, I, I don't remember exactly how. Is there any one round or like a bunch? No, it's not an individual round. At least when you see DN, it's a two round protocol. Like you see two. I don't remember exactly uh, how it works. He uses magic. <laughs> Is that another question? Somebody mentioned roast the other day. The robust one, right? Is, do you know anything about roast? It's an hour. No, hour one time. It's another hour. hour. <laughs> okay, three hours. It's an uh, improvement over uh, frost non standby. Oh, I see. It's just a non standby. Yeah, yeah. Well, the math is the whole okay. thing. You, you instantiate multiple frost sessions simultaneously. Mm-hmm. And the idea, like with frost, if let's say you're doing like a 66 out of 100 frost signature, mm-hmm. and you've get, you've like gathered 65 valid ones, and the last one's invalid, you have to restart the protocol from the beginning mm-hmm. and do it all over again. Oh, so you can sort of do things in parallel just to make sure. You can do things in parallel to make sure that as long as you have a threshold of honest participants, mm-hmm. yeah. you will get to a signature, mm-hmm. okay. um, guaranteed. Mm-hmm. So for things like Fetty Mint or like these huge thresholds, that's really useful. But for like a very simple wallet, like a two of three or something, mm-hmm. then you don't need So it's really just the parallelization, that's really all it is. That's, yeah. that's it really, Roast is just cross plus parallelization. Okay. Exactly. Huh. Or maybe a 203 like in a very unreliable network like Tor. Yeah, but it's like, if you're if you're doing a two of three and one person isn't working, then you just go to the other person and okay. you're done. But maybe like small thresholds, not like any means style, but you know, an un- un- reliable network like Tor. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Where where re- if restarting is a really big deal, you don't if you want to avoid restarting. Then yeah. Thanks. Thank you. What's the uh, upper limit on uh, signers for Frost? Hmm. I mean, so I think it's a really unrealistic number. Wait, I don't know. Well, there'd be the, the, the curve order you'd hit. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. 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 It's, it's not the curve. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't think there's a threshold. No, but the threshold it has to be in the finite field. It can't be a, like a value larger than the. Can't wrap it around? Because then it'll just become a lower number. Yeah, it'll become a lower number. So, yeah. Or it'll just become somebody else. It'll become a different level. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that is like a very big number. Yeah, I mean, you probably hit like computational, impractical, yeah. like time. So that is that is for all humans, we could have a frost for all humans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for, nice. for almost Play every Adam. Yeah. For, for almost every Adam. Planet nice. down. What would be the computation time to sign a single transaction with yeah. seven billion Schnorr signatures? Rose the, realized. the DKG, the the key gen would be. Um, oh. Would yeah. probably get you first. <laughs> It sounds like a fun research problem. Like, yeah. At yeah. what point does doing keygen become computationally infeasible? I don't know. It's like an XKCD comment. I want to do a, a music of 1.999 billion out of 7 billion or something. 6, 6.99 billion out of 7 billion. That'd be awesome. Like everyone has to agree except for one guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that guy is a big prize, you know. Yeah. We just can't agree who the guy is. Problem, right? Like, uh, and then yeah. we know one guy in the world is going to disagree with his guy. Right? Yeah. We just can't decide who that's going to be. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be him. <laughs> come to agreement about who the disagreeer is going to be, and then you're fine. Um, Can you prove who the disagreeer is? Can you no, I don't think so. But with Frost, you're guaranteed at some point for it to work, right? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you can, there's also these cool extensions to Frost, like um, proactive secret sharing, where you can rotate the shares without changing the underlying secret. So let's say you have, like, let's say you have a two of three wallet, and one of the keys you lose. And so you add in like a new participant. Normally you'd like 
do a sweep. So you you know sweep everything to a fresh two of three, which could be very expensive if you have a lot of UTXOs. So with Frost, you could like you could, you'd have a participant um, come into the protocol, and then you could rotate all the shares so the old shares are no longer um, valid. Wait, how do you invalidate them? You have to have T participants delete or overwrite their old shares. How do they prove deletion? Well, you can't mm-hmm. prove it. But the whole the security model is that T participants are honest. So if T aren't, then right. you're screwed anyway. I was say, okay. Um, but what you do is you commit to, the participants commit they create a new polynomial where the constant term is zero, and they create shares of that, and they add those shares to their old shares. So you've created, you've shifted the polynomial around, but you haven't changed the constant Okay, yeah, term. I guess that, that works. Yeah, because that way you can still incorporate the old shares. Because I was thinking, yeah, you can just generate a completely separate polynomial, and they would replace the old shares, but that's... Um, and you can, like, you can add, you can add and remove participants using that kind of protocol too. Yeah. Because all, all other points shift except for the intercept, which is a secret. Yeah. Exactly. You just need, if you're going to remove participants, you need T people to delete their old one, right? Yeah. Then, Maybe, or you just don't share the, the, you know, the, the new polynomial. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But you need T people to, to be there. I see, okay. Everything you need T people. T people. Has, has this been written up anywhere? This so there's already like in the literature there's in the Shamir literature there's what's known as um, proactive secret sharing like mm-hmm. there's a Wikipedia page about it mm-hmm. and there's repairable secret sharing so everything applying to secret sharing or Shamir shares we can drop into frost because you have Shamir shares so like so people haven't written it up specifically for Frost, but... Mm-hmm. But everything, apply, uh, these pro, uh, mm-hmm. proactive and reactive... Sh- Shamir... Uh, proactive or repairable. And repairable, okay, repairable Shamir... Secret sharing. Uh, secret sharing. Secret sharing, okay. Yeah. That that uh, replies to... Yeah, so those guys, they've been, they have a website where I think they've started writing up some of these yeah. Uh, ideas, yeah. 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 Nick Farrow also has a gist with some discussions. Yeah. And oh, then he the, has the private... He's UTXO club on. Yeah. Okay. He just proposed. Oh, there's also the Jupiter notebook. Yeah. Who did he propose to? He saw it. Yeah. Bitcoin mailing list. <laughs> oh, one of the top boys. Yeah, the big Bitcoin dev. <laughs> yeah. 